So, as I was saying, um, so I rang up the vets and they said that they'd put her in a crate and she they were monitoring her every 15 minutes, which I found very strange because if I've just paid you money to do a, an, an emergency C-section because you can see that she's struggling, why would you be monitoring her for a, over an hour? So, when I phoned up over an hour after, they told me on the phone that she was getting monitored every 15 minutes now. From what the vets told me that she started to contract and she started to actually push but then they've turned around and said that she stopped pushing and the puppy's head was too big and the legs were coming out first so the head wasn't first the legs were first but i'm really sorry but i've i have delivered enough puppies and, and many of my puppies have had their legs coming out first and there hasn't been a problem at all if anything the belly was bigger than the head so for them to say to me that <coughs> the puppy came out legs first and the head was at the top and it just wouldn't feel, fit through the pelvis canal i just don't believe them whatsoever i think that when they realized that she was contracting and she could actually deliver that pup herself they decided that you know what we've just taken her money we need to do a cesarean and we need to spay her and and that's what I think anyway from what and and then unfortunately the puppy they said to me that the puppy was de was deceased when it was you know taken out but that puppy was moving at the receptionist when I went walked into them vets that puppy was thriving it was moving a lot like actually wriggling and I just find it really really strange how the puppies come out dead it's just impossible if she was contracting as a vet, why wouldn't you use the feather in motion to get that puppy out? I, I just wish I'd kept her at home for a couple of hours more. And I know for a fact I would have been able to get that puppy out and it would have been alive. I don't even think that they tried to save that puppy at all. Sometimes people think that, you know, vets know best, but vets actually don't know best sometimes. Sometimes they're just there to take your money. And that's all they care about. They don't know about breeding or anything like that. They don't really study into that. So I just wanted to say to people, just think twice before you do take your dog to a vet's. And just make sure that they have the best in interest in your dog. And, it, it, you know, because to me, I just feel as if there was nothing wrong with this puppy. She wasn't too big. And, you know, it's just, I find it really strange. I just get this feeling and instinct that something definitely wasn't right there. You know, they didn't need to quickly do a cesarean on her if it wasn't needed. Why did they keep her in a crate for over an hour when they were meant to be doing a C-section on her straight away? Had they had done the C-section straight away instead of monitoring her and saying that there were other emergencies ahead? Um... I paid money so that she could have a C-section straight away. I wasn't expecting them to put her, put her in a crate and get her all stressed out and straining in an environment that she's not known to. And then all of a sudden she's straining and the puppy's like coming out, but then the head's not coming out. If you're a vet, you should know the method to get a, un a puppy unstuck. There's loads of methods on YouTube that people use. Everyone doesn't need to actually rush off to a vet. I wouldn't advise people to start rushing off to a vet if you do get worried because I've experienced it and now my dog has been spayed and she can't have any more puppies. And also they've even teared her um, vulva area by putting their whole hand up her or finger or something. That's what they said, which I think is really strange. Why would you need to do that? If she was if she was perfectly fine to do, uh, you know, contract and um, get that puppy out. I personally think that she must have been straining in the cage, and nobody was assisting to her, and and then they just last minute decided, oh, we need to do a cesarean instead. Let's just get the cesarean done, and put her through all that to get a cesarean done. I just really, really do feel as if PDSA has let me down. PDSA is a really, really bad vet company in my eyes personally. And, you know, they've got two star reviews online. So if you do live in the UK and you've got a pregnant bitch and you decide to take to the PDSA, I would not advise it because 
your dog would probably be coming out with no puppies <clears throat> and you know as much as people think that they're a good charity and they help and they're not the ones that actually give the money to the charity the national lottery supports them there's loads of different foundations that support them so it's actually the public that support the charities they are not the ones i just really really um quite devastated that you know she's lost her little puppy who was a little boy and I, I just truly believe that i could have saved it had i waited a couple of hours more but it's just it is what it is now and you know there's nothing that we can do about it but i will say to people that if you do live in the uk and you use pdsa for your dog <clears throat> as an emergency unless the dog is Unless the dog has got green discharge, black discharge, or red discharge, I wouldn't personally take your dog to the vets. Or the other reason could be if it's straining but nothing's coming out, then I obviously would take your dog to the vets. But I personally would, you would be better off um, getting a good pet insurance so that you know they actually do their job properly and um, because the previous vet that I did go to they did um, a scan on her they said that the puppy looked fine and healthy it had a good heartbeat and then all of a sudden it goes to PDSA and it's died literally it was alive in in that building it was alive so how how is the puppy dead Within hours of being in, in their care, the puppy is dead. I just find it really strange. And I, I, I feel as if it's really unfair on, on my actual dog because she hasn't got her puppy now. So I just don't think so. I just definitely think something wasn't right. A lot of people said it doesn't seem right at all. You know what? Sometimes I think to myself, people take their dog to the vets. They actually take your pet and that you have to sway in a waiting area. I believe that they should be doing whatever they're doing in front of you. They shouldn't do it behind the scenes because we don't actually really know what's going on. And to be honest, PDSA has been in the newspaper many times. Um, there, there was one, um, there was one old man pensioner who took his dog to PDSA, and they refused to help him, so his dog died. There was another scenario where. Um, there was a, a father of a daughter who was only five years old and he bought her a puppy and the puppy was sick and he took the puppy to the vets and they turned him away over £123 because he never had £123. They didn't treat the dog and that that dog actually died. So I do believe that, you know, sometimes vets just see it as a business. I personally, from experience and what I've seen, most vets don't even... Even I don't even think they enjoy what they do. I just think they're doing it because they thought they enjoyed it. A lot of the vets, you give them your dog and they, they act like they care about animals. But to be honest, they've got a long list of animals to see. They've got a long list of, um, um, they've got a, a lot of paperwork. They've got medication. They have that much stuff going on in there. I don't really think they give the time of day to an animal. They don't really care. I, I might sound like I'm ranting on right now, but I just think it's really bad how I took my dog to one vet nearby to me and they did a scan 